the fractured Democratic Party, the party of unity not so unified. The weekend was another dominated by anti-Israeli, pro-Hamas, and anti-Jewish protests in the U.S. and Western Europe. One did not have to look far to find protesters praising Hamas violence or calling for violence against Israel and the Jews themselves. This has shocked the conscience of many who never thought that the left wing of politics, especially in the U.S., would be so openly anti-Jewish. Though one did not have to look far to find the anti-Semitism just boiling below the surface of the American left, so it should not have come as too much of a surprise. The Israeli invasion has brought that anti-Semitism to the surface, and now the Democratic Party must find a way to manage it. The problem for the Democrats is that managing it could fracture the party and its coalition of disparate groups. The current Democratic Party, the majority party in the country, is made up of a coalition of groups that, often de- that are often defined by race, religion, or some other classification that the Democratic leadership has identified as a party of the dispossessed that have been ignored, victimized, or marginalized by the white or Christian majority in the U.S. The formation of this political majority has been reined in and has focused on to a unifying purpose to define its political opponents as evil and morally corrupt who want to take advantage of them and their own, for their own political gains. The Democrats have identified themselves as the protectors and promoters of these rights. This has turned up the political heat in the U.S. as political disagreements are no longer about policy, but about moral rights and wrongs. If the focus can be kept on deep antipathy of the opposition, the coalition will prevail. Then came the Hamas attack of October 7th, and everything changed. The protests were quiet at first, mainly around criticism of Israeli policy in the West Bank and Gaza, but then it moved from policy to outright celebrating and calling for violence against the occupiers and their supporters. Protests took to the streets and Jewish people were terrorized on the streets and college campuses with government officials and college administrators ignoring the threats and violence and often siding with the protesters. This is where it became a problem for the Democratic Party. Most Jews and most Muslims in the U.S., by a large majority, are Democrat constituencies and are just two of the disparate groups that make up the Democratic coalition. The party that just a few years ago was unified against Republicans and refused to call out blatant anti-Semitism of Minnesota Representative Ilhan Omar now has members within the coalitions criticizing and in some cases threatening each other. The unity is no longer apparent. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel has called on Michigan Representative Rashida Tlaib to retract her calls for Israeli genocide, which she tried to equivocate but never retracted. Tlaib has also threatened Joe Biden that if he continues to publicly support Israel, he will lose the Muslim vote. This is relevant because Michigan is now a swing state and has a significant Muslim population. Without Muslim support, Joe Biden could very well lose Michigan. Renowned constitutional attorney and law professor Alan Dershowitz wrote an opinion piece that stated both severely and criticized severely the Democratic leadership for some of its response in, col- response in colleges and unequivocally and university administrators that failed to address the violence intimidation, and vitriolic rhetoric against the Jews. Dershowitz did serve on President Trump's legal team during the first impeachment and has written a book criticizing the treatment of President Trump. Despite this, Dershowitz has proclaimed himself a lifelong Democrat who voted for Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden over Trump. He has now called on officials to rein in the anti-Jewish sentiments or he and many other Jews will switch parties. Muslim political figures in the U.S. are threatening to withhold support unless the Biden administration reverses its support for Israel and end all aid. The Jewish bloc, alarmed by this anti-Jewish element in their, their party, now threatening to switch parties. If both these blocs withhold support or vote Republican, this could tip the balance of this in, swing state, in swing states to the Republicans. If the Jewish vote leaves the Democratic Party, can it be assumed that the Muslims will stay aligned with the Democratic Party? How does this change the complexion of the Democratic Party? Does this mean that it will never elect a pro-Jewish leader again and adopt policies and positions hostile towards Israel? How does a highly religious Muslim population navigate in a party whose young and energetic base is pro-socialist and distinctly anti-religious? 
What becomes of the LGBTQ community status in a newly energized Muslim bloc that was able to push the Jews out of the party? Being energetically anti-establishment can only go so far before consolidation of power means that the groups of the party become marginalized by the positions of the stronger factions within that party. The Biden administration seems caught off guard by the strong anti-Jewish sentiment from the highest levels of power within the party establishment down to the rank and file voters of the party, many of whom would attack the White House over the weekend. The administration itself seems divided, so no clear message is being articulated either way, and as a result, animosity is filling the void and not the one of unity that has been the hallmark of the party establishment. 